What is up everybody and welcome to FLW Videos 2. In today's episode we will be focusing on how to get yourself the Poke Flute in Pokemon Let's Go. And I have to say you are going to see some really cool sequences It has to do with Lavender Town. And Lavender Town is one of my favorite places in the entire Kanto region. So I am very excited to cover this. There's basically going to be two parts which we will talk about as we go over the footage. But if this video is helpful to you make sure to hit that like button and and subscribe but with that being said let's go ahead and get in to the video so yeah when we are going through this in order for you to get yourself the pokey flute you have to actually go into lavender town despite not even necessarily having the sylph scope which is kind of interesting because in the past you could just go get the sylph scope come back go through the entire sequence of talking to mr fuji but in this case, that's actually not what we are going to have to do. Instead, you will have to battle against your rival. And then once you do the battle against your rival, you are going to have to go up the steps. Now, the reason why this is so important is because it will initiate a sequence where the Cubone is going to run away to the Team Rocket hideout. So yeah, that's what's going to happen. So like I said, once you get this completed, go ahead and go up the steps. And you could go all the way to the top if you want, but it could be kind of pointless at the same time because you will not be able to get past the final ghost until you get the Sylph Scope. So yeah, we are finally ready to go up the steps. As you will see when we go up here, we're going to run through yet another cinematic sequence and then we will be approached by a ghost and then Cubone will mysteriously leave out looking for its mother. Yeah, so that's what's going on with all of this. Uh, to be honest, not uh, too interesting of a topic. I thought the ghost kind of like, I'm like, oh, come on. That looks just like a haunter. Uh, I mean, don't you think it does? Definitely let me know what Pokemon you think that looks like. I think the hands kind of make it look like a uh, haunter, but uh, a couple of them turn into ghastly. So who knows? They don't get two different sprites. All of the ghosts kind of look the same. So yeah, there we go. We finally have Cubone about ready to walk down the steps. Once it does, this is the moment where you head off to the Team Rocket hideout. And then what will happen is once you get the Sylph Scope, it's time to come back to Lavender Tower, which is where we hit the sequence here. Once again, we have our rival talking to some people, and it seems like he's pretty obsessive about the Cubone. I don't know what his fascination is with it. I guess he hopefully just feels bad for it since it is searching for its mother. But yeah, we are finally ready to go back into Lavender Tower, which I am so excited about. I cannot wait till you guys get to see the sequence through this um, part of the game. You get some really cool looks into the game and kind of like how they decided to betray the different ghosts and stuff. Looks so fantastic. So yeah, we're just about ready to go get into the tower. And like I said, we're just going to walk through it. But this guide is aimed to help you get through this kind of like without doing as many battles. But if you want to do all the battles, by all means, go for it. But for myself, I'm trying to find the most optimal routes where you have uh, basically the least amount of time to be able to complete it. So yes, we are finally ready to unveil these ghosts. You'll see what I'm talking about earlier with Ghastly and Haunter actually having the exact same sprites because we ended up getting to see a Haunter, thought that was so cool, and thinking like, oh my gosh, just imagine if we could catch ourselves a Haunter throughout this. And I was, you know, crossing my fingers hoping that I would end up getting a spawn out of it, but I actually only ended up seeing like two or three wild Pokemon the entire time that I was walking through all of this, and it ended up just being a Ghastly, and it ended up being a Zubat, and like you've seen right here, I mean, pretty much the two spawns were just right here. There was another Ghastly popping up there, but yeah, if you go ahead and move up to the next floor, you can definitely pick up some items without running into any battles or anything. I definitely like it because there are so many rotations going on amongst the trainers and because of that that means that you could theoretically dodge just like we did there so if you're just interested in kind of like plowing through it wanting to get to a certain part in the game maybe like the let's go park you can definitely do it and then come back later and do the battles if you want this is one of the most memorable things that i remember from pokemon red yellow blue is that center area where you can heal your pokemon thought that that looked fantastic in uh, this new uh, way of looking at it on Let's Go. So yeah, once again, we're trying to do some dodging left and right, 
trying to get past these trainers. Definitely did a sweet little dodge there. Headed up the steps, didn't get hit by the Zubat, did a little stiff arm to it. And now we are on to the final floor that we are gonna have to look through. Once again, make sure you hit this Pokeball off to the right. You can get yourself some Ultra Balls. So I definitely wanted to go ahead and do that. They're pretty expensive, so definitely get them when you can. So check this out. This is the moment where I'm like, oh wow, there's a Haunter. Oh my gosh, I have to catch it. But that's actually not what it was. It ended up going into a new sequence. So let's go ahead and check it out. What an amazing cinematic sequence. Now I know that this is a video game, but the way that they are able to portray some of these like cutscenes and stuff is absolutely magnificent. So yes, we will release the uh, Cubone's mother's soul. The Marowak can finally move on and our rival is kind enough to take on the Cubone. Not gonna lie, if I got given the Cubone, it would have just sat in the Pokemon box. I know that sounds heartless, where you're like, this guy needs a place. Well, he'd probably go in with the other like three or 400 Pokemon for me. But yeah, I thought that that was really cool, so I definitely wanted to show you all of that. Easily my favorite cutscene that I've seen so far in the game. So now, it's time to finally go up the steps and face our Mr. Fuji. But before we end up doing that, we have to once again battle against Team Rocket. So yes, Team Rocket seems to be anywhere and everywhere when we are going through this entire game, which is, you know, we're used to it, especially if you played Red, Blue, and Yellow. Yeah, so they're going to try to spoil the fun and try to talk to Mr. Fuji. Now, I'm not really sure what they are so interested in with it maybe they want the pokey flute i know that that's why we want to talk to him but it's hard to tell with what team rocket's motives are sometimes so yeah go ahead and go through the battle go ahead and kick their butts if you want some recommendations i would highly recommend using some psychic type pokemon especially like Kadabra or alakazam if you have it at this point so now we are officially ready to talk to Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji, what is up? Go ahead and give me that Pokey Flute. I want to play some sweet tunes on that little flute and hopefully get ourselves a shiny Snorlax, which I will definitely cover in some later episodes. I'm going to try to see if with the Snorlaxes I end up getting them as a shiny. So definitely stick around for that. So yeah, we are finally ready to get the Pokey Flute from Mr. Fuji. This will awaken some sleeping Pokemon. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you did enjoy this and found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And I will see you next time. I've got an urge to